Hello networking enthusiasts, in this video I'd like to show you a few useful tools that can help you investigate networking issues. We'll talk about FPing, GPing, MTR and TRIP. Those tools go beyond the basic ping and trace route, offering advanced features like visual feedback, real-time route tracking and faster scanning. Whether you are diagnosing network slowdowns or packet loss, these hidden gems will give you the edge in the network troubleshooting. My name is Philip. let's dive right in. Ping is an essential network diagnostic tool used to test connectivity and troubleshoot network problems. It's usually one of the first commands you execute during connectivity investigation. There are three most common things that you'd like to use Ping for. Check if a remote host is online, measure network latency, or determine the link MTU. To check if the remote host is online, we'll use the fping command. fping is a powerful replacement for ping. First, let's run a traffic capture of the ICMP protocol. To check if the remote host is up, we'll execute fping and then the target address. What will happen behind the scenes is fping will send an ICMP echo request to the server and if the host responds to the packet with ICMP echo reply, it indicates that the host is online. If you need to check the round trip time, that is to measure the time it takes for the packet to travel from your machine to the target host and back, you need to add the dash E option to the fping. When ping sends the echo request, it starts the timer and once it gets the echo reply, it stops the timer and displays it here. Remember that ping measures round trip time to the host and back. Network latency, on the other hand, is the time it takes for data packet to travel from the source to the destination in one direction. RTT, that is round trip time, is there and back. Uh, sometimes people will say latency, but they will mean RTT. But now you know the difference. Okay, let's continue. You will say, I can do the same stuff with a regular ping command. True. Let me show you where fping becomes useful. What if you'd like to measure round trip time to more than one host? Let's try pinging Google DNS, Cloudflare DNS and Twitter at the same time. Do you see how easy it is? You can specify all targets in one line. It's very useful in any kind of automation scripts. For example, to determine if your internet connection is working. As far as checking if a host is online, you can also provide dash G option that will allow you to specify a range of IPs. Let's say I'd like to scan the first 10 addresses in my network. I will put dash E to measure the round trip time and dash G followed by the first address and the last address of the range. There you go. To hide the unavailable hosts, I will just add dash A to show systems that are alive and dash Q to suppress error messages. Here's a nice list of online hosts. Dash G also allows you to specify address in the CIDR format. Additionally, let's add dash S to get a summary. So we have a dash A to show hosts that are online, dash Q to suppress errors, dash E to show RTT, dash G to scan a range, and dash S to get a summary. Perfect. Here's a nice little summary. It tells us how many hosts are online, how many ICMP requests were sent, and round trip times for the network. If you want to measure average round trip time or detect packet loss, you have to send multiple probes. To do that, let's specify dash C option and then the number of probes to send. Let's say 100. Dash P option tells the ping the number of milliseconds between each probe. Let's put 10 milliseconds. As the target, I will put my default gateway. Here you can see the number of ICMP echo requests sent to the destination, the number of ICMP echo reply packets received back, and the percentage of packets that were transmitted but did not receive a reply. That number is called packet loss. If I want to see only the result, I can add the dash Q option. To make it more interesting, let's add a second host. Okay, here are the results for both hosts. Apart from packet loss, there's also minimum, average and maximum round trip time. Last thing I'd like to show you is how to determine MTU using fping. Of course, it's a trial and error type of exercise. First, you define how much data in bytes to send using dash B option and then set the don't fragment flag with dash M option. The IP header is 20 bytes, ICMP header is 8 bytes and the data amount we've sent is 1472 bytes. 
so the layer 3 packet size is 1500 bytes. If we try to increase the data to 1473 bytes, the ping will fail as the packet is too large and we don't allow the router to perform fragmentation. If you are interested in MTU and MSS, here's a separate video on that topic. That's the fping command, similar to regular ping but with few additional bells and whistles that make your life easier. Next tool I'd like to show you is gping. This is a graphical version of the ping command that offers visual, real-time feedback on network latency rather than just textual output. Let's run the command. What we can see is a graphical chart of ping results in real-time. This makes it a lot easier to spot patterns, trends or fluctuations like latency spikes, network instability or packet loss. If you look at the top, then apart from the default values like last, minimum, maximum and average round trip time, we also have jitter. That is the variation in packet delay. This is a critical parameter for applications like VoIP, video streaming and online gaming. So high jitter means irregular and inconsistent latency. There's also one more interesting metric called the 95th percentile. This represents a value below which 95% of data points in a given dataset fall. In other words, it excludes the worst 5% of latency measurements. 95th percentile is often used in performance monitoring to provide a more realistic picture of the network performance compared to average latency. Gping also allows you to monitor multiple IP addresses or domain names simultaneously. Let's ping Google DNS and Twitter at the same time. This is useful if you are comparing latency to multiple destinations. Mind that sometimes firewall block ICMP traffic and you'll not see the ICMP echo reply despite the host being online. Let's move to Traceroute. That's another common network diagnostic tool. It shows the path that packet take from your machine to the destination host. Traceroute lists each hop along the way, including the IP address and latency. Why would you want to do a Traceroute? First of all, to determine which route packet take to reach their destination. Second of all, to diagnose routing issues. By looking at the trace route, you can pinpoint which hop is causing delays or packet loss or at which hop the traffic stops. It also provides insight into the network topology by listing the intermediate devices between your machine and the destination. That helps you understand the network topology. To show you how Traceroute works under the hood, I will use the TracePath command. First, let's uh, capture all the traffic to the target host as well as any ICMP packets. Then, let's run the TracePath command to a host that's two hops away. Ok, first hop is my default gateway, second hop is my ISP router and the third hop is the first device on the ISP network, maybe an OLT or a router. If we look at the traffic capture, first we'll see a packet sent from our host to the target. Two things to notice. The packet is an UDP packet, not an ICMP echo. And packet has a TTL that's time to leave value set to 1. TTL defines the maximum number of hops the packet can take before being discarded. Remember, each hop decreases the TTL value of the packet by 1. As the packet reached the router, the TTL was decreased by 1. Since the TTL is now zero, the router discarded the packet and sent an ICMP time exceeded message back to the source. Now the tracepad sends another packet, but this time with TTL set to two. So the packet will go through the first hop, but the second hop discards it and send the ICMP time exceeded message back to the sender. Eventually, the packet reaches the destination as TTL set to three is large enough to allow the packet to pass through all the hops. As nothing is listening on the UDP port, the target replies with an ICMP port unreachable message. So long story short, Traceroute sends packets with TTL set to 1, then 2 and so on and expect an ICMP time exceeded messages from each router that discarded the packet. Mind that on Windows operating systems, Traceroute sends ICMP packets. In Linux operating systems, Traceroute usually sends UDP packets but it differs tool to tool. First tool to trace the route that everyone should know is MTR. I will run a trace route from my PC to Cloudflare DNS. What we notice is the MTR continuously sends packets to the destination. Unlike traditional trace route, which performs a one-time trace of the path, here you can see real-time statistics. If we look at the screen, we'll see both the path to destination, but also run trip time to each hop along the way. The statistics are updated continuously, showing packet loss, that is percentage of lost packets to each hop, number of packets sent, as well as round trip measurement for each hop. 
last, average, best, worst, and standard deviation. You can change the statistics to see the jitter by pressing J. You can turn off DNS resolution by pressing N. At any time, you can restart the statistics by pressing R. By pressing Y, you can cycle through more information about each hop. First, it will display the autonomous system number. Then it will display the IP prefix. Then it will show the country code of the origin AS. Then it will display the regional information registry. And lastly, the allocation date of the IP prefix. Of course, MTR also has a report mode that will print the trace route to the screen and exit. If you are troubleshooting a network connection and someone asks you for a trace route, this is the command you should execute. MTR-B to show host names and IPs, dash Z to display the AS number, dash W for white output, and dash R for report mode. Let's try that. There you go. This is how a proper trace route looks like. Next trace route command I'd like to show you is relatively new. It's called Trippy. Let's run a trace to two nodes. We see the trace route as a nice table. Here on the far right, there's a status column with colors. Green is healthy, blue or brown is non-target with packet loss, yellow is target with packet loss, and red is target unresponsive. What we can do is use the arrow right key to move to the next target and arrow left key to move back. Moreover, you can use up and down arrow keys to select any hop along the path. Here's the latency graph as well as the number of samples with specific round trip time. By pressing I, we can switch to IP address view. By pressing N, we can switch to host names only. We can also press B to see both. We can freeze the display with Ctrl F and clear the selection with escape key. By pressing C, we can switch to chart view. You can also restart the trace with Ctrl R and flash DNS cache with Ctrl K. Let me rerun the trace, but this time I will add dash R option to indicate we want to use Google as the DNS resolver, add dash G option and provide a go location data file, and dash E to parse ICMP extensions. Pressing Z will reveal the AS number. Moreover, if I select a node and press D, it will display the AS name, AS information, geolocation, approximate distance, and MPLS details if applicable. Lastly, pressing M will show a minimap. How cool is that? Trippy also has a configuration file where you can tweak various parameters. That wraps up our look at four powerful but lesser known network diagnostic tools, FPing, GPing, MTR, and Trippy. Whether you are troubleshooting network latency, tracking packet loss, or just exploring new ways to monitor your connections, those tools will definitely step up your game. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future content. In upcoming videos, we'll explore more essential networking tools, including those for monitoring network performance, benchmarking, testing TCP connectivity, and more advanced troubleshooting. Stay tuned for more tips and tricks to help you take control of your network like a pro. Thanks for watching and see you next time.